Well, hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Network Chuck. So, uh, do you want to be a unicorn? Now, before we get started, something very important. Do you need some training? Do you need some amazing CCNA, CCMP training that will help you get certified? You do. Well, then, guys, I need. I, any internet network experts, they are the go-to for training. Trust me, I'm using them. They are amazing. They are the sponsor of this video. So thanks, I, and e. I and e is having a sale right now on their CCNA training bundles. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Get this, 50% off their training bundles. 50% off the CCNA training bundles. So if you're looking for the CCNA routing, switching, CCNA security, or CCNA service provider bundle, those are gonna be 50% off until Friday. So hurry the junk up, get your bundle so you can get certified, guys. So programming, we've all heard about it, right? SDN, programmability, it's all these little buzzwords within networking that we keep hearing about. What's going on? Does that mean that every network engineer is gonna to have to become an, uh, a programmer or a developer? No, no, I don't think every single person is going to become a full-fledged developer. and. Honestly, the extent of programming and networking is never going to be at that point where you have to know APIs in depth. I mean, it could be. I mean, I don't know. It honestly could be. But in the near future, I don't see anything like that. Guys, times are changing. Um, right now, Cisco Live is going on. If you don't know what Cisco Live is, it's where it's, they, they call it summer camp for geeks, right? And if you're there, I hate you because I want to be there right now. It looks so much fun. Basically, it's summer camp for geeks. It's where all the Cisco nerds and everyone come together in Las Vegas. I think it's like 27,000 people and they just, they just have fun. All these guys are passionate about networking and voice and security. It's awesome and it's really fun. But the big thing at Cisco Live this year is it's programmability, it's intent-based networking, it's all these little buzzwords, these market, marketing things, but whatever the case, networking is changing and if you don't learn and grow, you're gonna get left behind. But for network engineers, guys, that's nothing new. We're, we've always been learning and growing. That's why in our industry, certifications are valuable because what you learned in college 10 years ago has n very little to do with what you're doing in your job today. So staying up to date on certifications makes you valuable. And that's why I, I love Cisco's architecture. I love Cisco's ecosystem because it creates an amazing career. Cisco has really changed my life with their certification tracks, their technology, and it's empowered me to have an amazing career. So back to what I was saying, times are changing. So now it's time for us as network engineers to go through yet another change. So that begs the question right now. And I know there's, there's a bunch of people out there who say in the networking field is dying, that network engineers are a dime a dozen now. If you really want money, go into programming. Um, won't say any names, but it's a guy who has a piece of toilet paper with CCNA written on it, and he says that's the value of the CCNA. That's that's all it's worth is the toilet paper it's written on. I could not disagree more. If you're working on your CCNA, don't be discouraged by that nonsense. It's an extremely valuable certification. It's going to make your career amazing. But he does have a valid point. Programming is the future. Networking is going to go away, and I truly believe this from individually configuring switches in the command line or routers in the command line. Now you have to know how to do it. That's always gonna be the, the case. You have to know what you're doing, but that process is going to go away for more programmatic um, automation. It's, you're gonna be doing these from controllers, from programs, from scripting. So basically my whole point is one way or another, if you're in networking, if you're in voice, if you're in security, if you're in IT, programming is gonna be a part of your life. It's going to infiltrate your company. It's going to infiltrate your career. I think it's time to take notice, guys. So that begs the question. Well, Chuck, if programming is the future, then why not just jump right into it? Just go for my Python. Go for, you know, that's kind of your entry-level language. Python is so popular right now. And Cisco has even released training for Python with their net network programmability tracks. So you're probably asking, you're probably wondering, you know, Chuck, if, if programming is going to be the future, then why not just jump into my Python training? Or why don't I just jump into Java or jump into, you know, whatever fill in the blank language you want? Well, I, that wouldn't be a bad option. Honestly, that would be fine. You would find an amazing lucrative career going down the programming path. So if you want to go that way, go for it. 
But let me tell you something I heard at the uh, Cisco Users Group here in Dallas uh, for our June, no, was it the June meeting? For our June meeting. And by the way, um, Cisco Users Groups, um, I think they're all over the US. Um, it's incredible. You get to, to hang out with other like-minded people in your area. Um, our group is, ho we actually have it hosted at Cisco, um, the Cisco office in Richardson. So it was kind of cool to go to Cisco, hang out with all these guys who are passionate about Cisco. And it's also a great networking tool and it's also a great place to uh, find a job if you're just starting out. I actually took my little brother with me and uh, he needs a job at networking. So I took him with me. They had him stand up, they, they had him say what he was looking for and they asked if anyone was hiring. So if you're looking for a job, if you're just breaking into this field, network guys. These are great places to find out if there are jobs in the area, find out what jobs are open, and get connected. Well, anyways, back to Python, right? So, so this event was hosted by Tech Systems. If you've never heard of Tech Systems, they're a massive um, IT uh, MSP. Um, they're you know a VAR, a value added reseller for Cisco. They're also one of the biggest tech recruiters out there. Um, I've never personally used them, but I've had the recruiters reach out to me constantly. I had a bunch of friends who have used them to be placed in amazing roles. Um, and they sponsored this event. They kind of had their finger on the pulse of what's going on in the job market, what's happening for network engineers. So their recruiters stood up there and basically told us what people are looking for. They did kind of tell me that networking, uh, network engineering, very hot right now. They said the job market, um, at least here in Dallas, has significantly increased, just doubled. They are having a hard time finding network engineers. But then the concept of a unicorn came up. They said, guys, or gals who know networking, but also know a little bit of programming, those, those are what they're looking for. They're rare. They call them unicorns because there aren't really any of them out there. Unicorns are what the industry is looking for right now. And I think it's kind of where we're going. So the answer to the question, should I study for my CCNA or should I study for Python and just become a programmer? Well, you have to answer this question. Do you want to be a unicorn? Do you want to be extremely valuable? Do you love networking, but you also do you also want to make yourself valuable to whatever company you go to? Do you, do you want to increase your earning potential? So here's my answer to this question, and this is what I personally started doing. So, you know, I've got my CCNA. I've got my CCNA voice. I'm studying for my CCMP routing and switching. I've got my T-shoot um, cert left. Still working on that, so Keep me encouraged guys, it's hard. But at the same time, because I see so much value in it, I've started to learn a little bit of Python. I found this great deal on Udemy. If you've never used Udemy, it's um, basically people who really know their stuff, who are awesome at what they do, they create and teach their own courses. So if you need to learn something quick and you don't want to break the bank, Udemy's a great place. So if you need like really cheap uh, CCNA training or really cheap um, Microsoft training or any kind of certification training, you can find it on Udemy and you won't break the bank. And I, I also list some of those resources on my website, networkchuck.com, go check it out. So I bought this course on Python, uh, on Udemy, and I've started to learn because I see the value in this. I know that eventually things are gonna start going this way. So my challenge to you, yes, studying for certifications, hard, really, really hard. But at the same time, you have to make yourself sharp. You have to be ready for what's coming. And you know what? Be excited. Because it's, it's really so much fun. But my advice to you, take a little bit of time. If it's just once a week, if it's once a day for like an hour, if it's just a little bit of time a month, invest a little bit of time in learning programming. You don't have to become a programmer per se, but just start playing with it. There are courses on Udemy that will teach you how to write Python scripts to automate some uh, some routing and switching tasks. You can configure a router from Python, you create your own pro programs. There are courses geared towards network engineers to learn Python and you can immediately start using that in your career. Now real quick, I wanna introduce this new segment I wanna do. I'm calling it the broadcast address. Um, this is where I wanna break down the top three things I've heard in the news from Cisco to IT to networking to just everything in general that you wanna hear. And obviously the biggest thing going on right now is Cisco Live. If you are lucky enough to be there, oh, it's so much fun. I am going next year, so if any of you guys are gonna go, whoo, we can hang out there. So next year, Cisco Live 2018, wherever it's gonna be, gonna be awesome. So what's going on with Cisco? So I read this article before they even, before Chuck Robbins even had his big keynote address, which if you did not see Cisco's keynote address 
uh, on the opening day of Cisco Live. Oh my gosh, it's a great time to be a network engineer. So exciting, right? They even had Tim Cook from Apple come on the stage. Come on guys, Apple and Cisco together, come on. Ugh, geeking out, right? But uh, Cisco's new thing is they're kind of transitioning from being a hardware only company uh, which is what they've been for, for a long time, trying to transition to be a software-based company, which is how everything is kind of moving. So they have this new thing called Cisco DNA, their, their digital network architecture. And one of the coolest applications of this is the security aspect with malware detection. So they can identify malware even when it's encrypted by using machine learning and analytics. It's the software tool called Encrypted Traffic Analytics. And you know, it's gonna be a big deal. Currently there's 75 companies using uh, Cisco DNA. You got Ypro, Royal, Royal Caribbean, and, uh, and NASA. So if NASA's using it, it's pretty good. You know, the other big piece of news is the announcement of their new Catalyst line, the Catalyst 9000 series. This is kind of their big push to network programmability. I already talked about that, right? This is going to be their Internet of Things switch, their, their smart switch that you can get in there and you can even program. There's, there's going to be an API for the ASIC, you know, the, the, um, the hardware built and specifically built to switch packets. You can integrate with an API in their ASIC. So basically their hardware is going to be completely API friendly. That means a lot for programmability. They said it's built for the age of connected devices. So the big thing on the Catalyst 9Ks, advanced programmability, um, end-to-end -end security. They also had a little help from Ferrari, name dropping, to design the Catalyst. Now it doesn't look all, you know, uh, streamlined and turbo. Ferrari helped them to design the switch to make it easier to use, more, I think, more modular. And another cool thing that Chuck Robbins mentioned in the keynote is that it's gonna have container-based um, architecture, so you can actually host third-party apps on the switch. What? I, I can't even imagine the applications of this. Now, I did see a funny thing. It's confirmed Bitcoin mining is not gonna be supported on the uh, Catalyst 9K, so get that out of your head right now. And hey guys, the baby is crying, so I hope you don't mind she crashes the video for a sec. And I also want to start a new thing called Certification Wins. You know, it's encouraging to see other people get their certs, and it's awesome to get your cert, and you wanna brag about it, right? You wanna say, hey guys, I passed. So if you pass your certification, if you pass your CCNA, A+, Network Plus, MCSA, MCSE, whatever it is, let me know in the comments below and I'll mention you in my next video. Um, I, I know I probably saw more, but I just couldn't find any. But I do want to give a shout out to David Carter. He passed his A plus exam last week. So, ah, awesome, David. And I also want to give a shout out to James Gilmore, got his CCNA. So, Whoop, whoop, go James. So again, if you pass your cert, let me know guys. I'll mention you in the video. All right, now we're going handheld for a second. Sorry about the audio change. Cause I wanted to show you something cool. Um, I got a new toy. I finally broke down and I bought myself a Cisco UCS chassis. Whoop, whoop. So far I've got call manager, presence, unity, and expressway on this bad boy. It's pretty sweet. I got my phone set up and everything, so it's pretty awesome. So that's kind of my tip and trick. I, I want to start doing uh, a few tips and tricks uh, for certification study or just Cisco in general or you know technical stuff. And my tip this week, guys, is do what you can to get your hands-on experience with the lab. Um, Packet Trace is great. GNS3 is great. And for a lot of applications and study, it's the best situation. But other times, you just can't beat physical hardware. So invest in it if you can. If you can't, that's perfectly fine. If you have an employer who'll let you just jack around with their stuff at the office, that's awesome too. But there is benefit to getting your own stuff, spinning up your own environment, and you feel good, you feel confident. So if you're, if you're kind of lacking confidence, lab it up, guys. Labbing it up gives you confidence. Guys, that's about it. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for joining me here. Thank you for keeping me inspired. I hope you're inspired. Let's get certified together. If you need help with some training resources, reach out to me. I don't mind answering any questions. I love helping you guys out. If you need help with study questions or anything, reach out. If I don't know it, someone else will. We'll get you in touch with someone. If you're not sure where to start, 
I list a bunch of great resources on my website, networkchuck.com forward slash resources. I'll put a link below, a link up here somewhere, just click on it. And if you want to be awesome, uh, I've got merch, guys, repping Network Chuck, and one of my favorite commands, Comp T. Let's rock and show people that we know how to get in global configuration mode. Whoop whoop! And also, come on, Jeremy Char says this is his favorite command, it's my favorite command too. Show IP interface brief, and then check out the back. So you can find that on my website, networkchuck.com forward slash store. Anyways, thanks guys. If you're at Cisco Live, have fun. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.